Hello everyone. Up till now, we have discussed about the basics of CAE, the graphical user interface of ANSYS Workbench, how to create a model or an assembly in ANSYS Workbench design model. And we have also understood how to perform the meshing on the designs. We have also understood some of the advanced meshing techniques that can be performed in ANSYS Workbench. Now we will start discussing about the different types of analysis that can be performed in ANSYS Workbench. The first type that we are going to understand is structural analysis. So let us start with it. Structural analysis is the most common applications in FE. The word structure does not only come in civil engineering to refer structures like bridges and buildings, but it can also be used for the mechanical structures like machine housing, aircraft structures, pistons, and many other mechanical components. There are different types of structural analysis and they are static analysis, dynamic analysis, spectrum analysis, buckling analysis, explicit dynamic analysis. The dynamic analysis is further divided into modal analysis, harmonic analysis and transient dynamic analysis. Out of this, we are only going to discuss about the static analysis, modal analysis, uh, buckling analysis. These are the types that we are going to study in our syllabus. Now let us discuss about these individual analysis. First, we will talk about static analysis. Static analysis is used to determine outputs like displacements, stresses, strains, reaction forces under static loading conditions. Static loading condition means that the load applied does not vary with respect to time and therefore it is a gradual load. That means The load that you apply is a gradual load with respect to time. It is not an impact load. Okay, So this is the graph if you plot for the force with respect to time. And whenever you consider static analysis, there are two types of analysis that can be performed. That is linear analysis and nonlinear analysis. Both the analysis can be performed. But here, we, in our syllabus, we are only going to cover the linear analysis. Now, when you talk about linear analysis, the analysis is going to perform within the elastic limits, where it is obeying the Hooke's law. That means the stress and the strain have a linear graph. Okay, and therefore, it follows the Hooke's law. So, whenever you apply a force, Suppose we have a cantilever beam over here and you are applying some force on it because of which there will be some change in length. So now if there is a change in length or if there is any deformation, if I remove the force, the deformation will vanish and it will again regain its original shape. That means the deformation is within the elastic limit. So that is what we consider in linear analysis. Another point that you should know about static analysis is that in static analysis, the inertia and the damping effects are ignored. We do not consider the inertia and damping effects when we are solving the static structural analysis. And if you want to understand the matrices that are solved in the software, this is the matrices that is solved in the software that is k into x is equal to f that means k is nothing but the stiffness matrix x is nothing but the displacement matrix and f is nothing but the load matrix. This is the same force balance equation which we considered for the numerical uh, method when we solved a problem using the analytical method and the numerical method. So this is the same formula which we used in the numerical method. Okay. So this is what we understand about the static analysis. Now let us move to the next one that is the dynamic analysis. In dynamic analysis, 
we can determine the displacements, stresses, and strains. But the major difference between static analysis and dynamic analysis is that the force that is applied on the model varies with respect to time and it is a time dependent load. Therefore, the loads that are applied over here can be impact loads or they can be random loads. It is not a gradual load that is applied in dynamic analysis. Even here, the system or the design that we are analyzing can be linear and can be non-linear both. The dynamic analysis is further divided into modal analysis, harmonic analysis and transient dynamic analysis. Modal analysis is nothing but it is used to calculate the natural frequency of a system and also the mode shapes of the system. So in modal analysis, it is in simpler words, you can call this as vibration analysis. In vibration analysis, you are going to calculate the natural frequency of the system. Harmonic analysis is used to determine the response of a structure. That means you will, understand, you will try to understand how does a system react to the inputs that you are getting, giving. Now the inputs that you give are harmonically time varying loads. Okay, So they can be sin uh, loads like a sinusoidal uh, wave which is a time varying uh, load and you want to understand the reaction of your system to these loads. So that is nothing but a harmonic analysis. And then we have something called as transient dynamic analysis. In transient dynamic analysis, we use to this type of analysis to understand the response of a structure to arbitrarily time dependent loads. Now here, the loads that we are going to apply are going to be time dependent, but they are uh, not a sinusoidal wave as it is in the harmonic analysis. Okay. Now when you talk about dynamic analysis, <coughs> in this analysis also, <coughs> we, <coughs> we have some matrices that are solved. Now the equation that is solved in dynamic analysis is nothing but, if you can see over here, mx plus kx is equal to 0. Now this equation will be used when the system that you are analyzing does not have any external load acting on it. So the equation is m double derivative of x plus k single derivative of x is equal to 0. But if the system that you are analyzing has an external force acting on it, then the equation or the matrices that is solved by the software is m double derivative of x plus k single derivative of x is equal to f of x, where m is the mass matrix, k is the stiffness matrix, x is the displacement matrix and f is the load matrix. Now this equation is a force balance equation for a dynamic system. Earlier what we saw is a force balance equation for a linear system. Okay, that is the main difference between static analysis and dynamic analysis. Next we will go to spectrum analysis. Spectrum analysis is nothing but this type of analysis is an extension of the modal analysis and it is used to calculate stresses and strains due to random vibration. The best example to understand what the spectrum analysis is to study the behavior of a structure during an earthquake. Now that is the best example to understand what is spectrum analysis. Next we will talk about buckling analysis. Buckling analysis is used to calculate the buckling load or the buckling motion of a structure. Now what kind of a structures uh, we need to study over here? Whenever a slender object, slender object means any object whose length is very very long as compared to the cross section of the body, that is nothing but a slender structure. When these type of structures are subjected to actual compressive loads, the structure tends to buckle at a certain load value. So in buckling analysis, we have to find out at what load does the structure buckle because it is a very important factor when you want to design. Okay, So that is what we will be doing in buckling analysis. Next we will talk about explicit dynamic analysis. Explicit dynamic analysis is only available in ANSYS LS Dyna application. 
and this type of analysis can be used for solving complex problems and for getting faster solutions for these kind of complex problems. For example, when you fire a bullet, how will the structure behave? That is what can be analyzed in explicit dynamics. Explosions, okay, these all su such kind of examples can be analyzed using the explicit dynamic analysis, okay. Now let us go further and understand how to perform static structure analysis in ANSYS workbench. So in this chapter we will be understanding how to perform the static structural analysis. We will understand how to perform a complete procedure of creating the model, meshing the model, applying the boundary conditions, setting up the results and then checking the results. When we are doing this, we will be taking uh, all types of problems like 3D models, we will be taking 2D models, 1D models and also SMEs. And we will also study some important tools that are related to static structural analysis. Okay. So now let us begin. The first thing that we need to do is we need to understand the graphical user interface of static structural analysis. So for starting with that, you need to add a static and structural system to the project schematic window. Then import a geometry or create a new geometry. So what I'm going to do over here is I will just import one geometry over here and then I will enter into the mechanical mode. So if you look at the graphical interface, we have the graphics window over here. We have the tree outline, the details window. Here you have some options like messages. You will get your graphs, tables, uh, your report view, print view, your view triad is here. Then we have the contextual toolbar over here. The contextual toolbar changes as we select the different nodes over here. If you are in the model node, the contextual toolbar looks like this. If you are in the static structural node, the contextual toolbar changes. Okay. We have the selection filters over here. We have the viewport options over here. So this is a general graphical user interface that we will see when you enter into the static structural mechanical window. Okay. So that is the introduction of static structural analysis. Now we will go further and see how to perform analysis in static structural analysis. 